Hey gang, I'm back. My name is Steve, and thanks for jumping in on the channel, Creation Calls. Hope this finds everybody well. I'm going to talk a little bit about printing, and I'll just throw the question out there. Should you print your images that you take? I'm going to give you my take on it, but I'm going to give you a little history. So I've been in, I've had a camera in my hand since I was about 13, 12 or 13 years old. I should be a better photographer, <laughs> but that's not the point. I have more fun with photography. I've, I've been into all different types of hobbies and I keep coming back full circle into photography. Now, going all the way back into high school, all right, now I'm going to be 60 in October of this year. We're talking going back into middle school, high school, 13, 14 years old, freshman in high school, 15, you know. Of course, I was shooting all black and white on an old Graflex that my father gave me. And I had more fun back then I can still remember those days believe it or not that was a long time ago and being in the dark room with the photography club instructor who looked like a mad scientist he looked like Albert Einstein he was the nicest guy he was the coolest guy and he really instilled a passion for photography however back then it was all about the print of course, Photoshop and all that stuff obviously didn't exist back then. It was all about the print. So that's that's my that's the foundation of everything that I do. It's all every capture that I take. Well, not every capture. Some of the captures are just for fun, but every capture that I take is geared towards the final print. Because that's, you know, I'm not part of this world. I don't operate in the world where everything goes on computer. Ooh, i got to get it on Instagram. Now, I do have a Flickr account, but that's useless as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I have no use for social media uh, aside from YouTube. I just, I enjoy YouTube because I get to share my experiences. Experiences. So, you know... Building upon that foundation, I got into Ilphachrome, Cibachrome, Ilphachrome, doing color. I did all of my own processing, negatives included, slide film, Fuji Velvia, and did all my own color printing. Had a dark room here, right here in this room, over there. And... I learned a lot, looked at, you know, if you, if you look at what it takes to achieve a final print that is truly what you intended it to, intended it to look like, there's a lot involved. And I learn every single time I run a print. Now, granted, I'm not doing it in the darkroom anymore. I'm doing it all digitally. But still, it's the same thing, you know. So, you know, fast forward to today, is it worth <clears throat> buying a decent printer? And you don't have to spend exorbitant amount of money on a printer. You can spend three, four hundred dollars on a printer. Considering what most people have invested in their camera gear. It's imbecilic not to get a printer. Now, that's just my take on things. The reason why I say that is because you never, you can sit here and you can look at the computer screen till your hair goes gray, falls out in clumps, and you can tweak and tweak and tweak. But until you send it to print, you go to print it, you just don't know. There's something about having a printed image in your hands 
It's hard to describe, but it shows you things. A lot, and I'm not going to get into a debate on the difference between working in a dark room and digitally working in Photoshop, because a lot of principles still apply. In the dark room, you have to create physical masks for parts of the print to control the exposure across parts of the print. You do the exact same thing in Photoshop. Now, granted, there's a lot more things you can do in Photoshop, but I'm more of a purist, and I like everything from the bird captures that I do. I want them in their natural environment. I'm not looking for the perfect background. I'm looking for character, expressions, looks. The background is always secondary. Yeah, it's nice to have a nice, beautiful smooth, creamy bokeh in the background. But that oftentimes isn't realistic, and it's also not natural. Songbirds, they love to be in cover. You know, more often than not, you're not going to find songbirds out in the middle of a field sitting on one stick, where the background is like 100 feet away. I mean, it's, it's a cluster. You know, you have to work at it. Excuse me. So, you know, going to final print, when you take a picture, do you have the print in mind? And I will confess, oftentimes I don't, but I do have the exposure in mind. Because if you blow the highlights, and if you can't recover shadow detail, there's nothing you can do. Unless you want to be a cheat and clone it all in. Have I cloned stuff? Yeah, I've cloned stuff that was really distracting out of some of my images years ago, like when I was shooting weddings and stuff. That was for a client, and that was to get the image as good as possible. This is for me. I'm doing this for fun. But... Going to print, like you can see back here, I've got an Epson 70 Pro, Epson Pro 7600, large format printer. Had it for years. Thing still does Cracker Jack prints. And since I got back into photography and I started pursuing birds, what a challenge. What a challenge. And especially small birds, small songbirds. And I can tell you, getting a print in my hands, being able to see it off the computer screen, first of all, it's tactile. Most of you probably say, who cares? It's just as good on the computer screen. I can tell you it's not. It's not because the computer makes everything look good. <laughs> a print, there's a certain art in printing. And coming from my background, from Years ago, decades ago, it's one thing to get it on the computer screen, have it look good. It's another thing to get it to print. And it's a challenge. And I consider it 50% of the actual photog photographing process. It's 50%. Because for me, that's the end goal. I don't really care about printing for other people. If somebody wanted to buy a print, go for it. And I'll probably, maybe I'll end up selling. I sold prints years ago when I was in landscape photography. And the things that I thought would sell didn't sell. And the things that, I mean, it was just very bizarre what people, and there's other videos online about that. And it's true. I can tell you it's true. What you think is great, people will have no interest in. You may have something really you're very fond of, very close to your heart, and yeah, whatever. People are like, yeah, yeah, that's okay. You know, but then you enter the arena, the, the time period where everybody's a photographer, right? Everybody can take a picture. Everybody can take a picture, but not everybody can print one. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm a master printer because I'm not. Every single print 
I just went through this this book. This proof. This is basically a proof book, and I'm burning old ink and burning paper because the stuff is old. And I went through it pixel peeping with a pair of goggles, and I've got some things wrong. You can't. It's not there on the computer, but the way it goes to print, it is there. And that's the point. It's a whole nother art form. It's a whole nother process that is, is challenging to master. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, these are 11 by 14 prints. And this is a, basically a portfolio binder. And this is part of, uh, the time stand still I'm doing a time stand still series of volumes and this is volume one and this is songbirds and it's far from complete I have more I just saw uh, I've got literally a birds a songbird sanctuary here and I'll be going into how I put that together it's amazing I was sitting in the entrance to the garage photographing woodpeckers the other, a couple days ago and this bird came land flew around a corner landed right at my feet he didn't know i was there and i looked down and i thought huh what the heck is that it was a um house wren and yesterday morning i looked out at the south south end the south bird feeder the south south station and i looked and i thought what is that bird it's a white-capped sparrow who's in a migratory state. They're moving through. I had at least 30, 30 to 40 goldfinches that have come in. The goldfinches that are here are still in molt. They're still molting. And the ones that came in a couple days ago, I mean, what a circus. It was awesome. Bright, bright canary yellow. I mean, awesome. And it was like a roar in the trees. You know, it's exciting. It's fun. I love it. But I'm learning, I'm noticing birds that I never paid attention to before. They're here. My job, my not my job, but my goal is to capture them, to capture as many of these songbirds as I possibly can, because I'm telling you, there's a lot of them here. And this little songbird sanctuary I put together, I'm going to do a video on this, and it works. It's pretty cool. I have uh, stations for, I'm digressing, I know, stations for, uh, I'm setting up a hummingbird. Uh, we have uh, four pair of hummingbird that, hummingbirds that come in every year. I've been in the hummingbirds for 30 years. I love them. They are pissy little creatures. <laughs> they fight to the death over the feeders. They guard the feeders. And um, I have huge patches of bee balm, massive here that I've worked for years to develop. I also have uh, honeysuckle bushes coming online this spring, this summer. And they love, I think it's gold, golden something honeysuckle. Love that stuff. So I'll have those in play. Now we have multiple pairs of Baltimore Orioles here as well. Uh, every summer. And they have a, a brood. They have their chicks. And it, that is a circus in and of itself. I mean, they're all in. They love grape jelly. They love like mandarin oranges. So I'll be in the process of setting up a staging area because I found Baltimore Orioles will come in and stage. I am so severely digressing, but see how the exciting this is? This is really fun. Right in your backyard. You don't even have to go anywhere. So, and it doesn't cost hardly anything. I'll show you how I do this stuff. It doesn't cost anything. As long as you got a saw, a few screws, you're off and running. And, um, of course, birdsy. But I'll get into all that. So what I'm doing, this is the time stand still. This is what I'm calling it. This is volume one. It's all about songbirds. Local to my QTH in this area. 
as many as I can possibly compile and capture. And this is the start of the printing process, and these are all proof prints. So basically, this is premium glossy paper, Epson, stuff's 20 years old. Still prints okay, still looks okay. I have Red River paper over there, a whole batch that just came in. So once I get the proofs settled, I will be jumping to the red. I have Red River Pearl Metallic killer stuff coming. Actually, it's here. It's over there beyond the table. I also have a whole other ink set uh, for the printer because that's running out of ink. I'm just going to burn it out. It's old. So uh, I think this binder was, I don't know, 13 bucks. It's cheesy. But it gives you something to put your prints in. And these are big. These are 11 by 14. I like big. Challenge is good. <coughs> Excuse me. Still got the cold. So let's just take a look here. I'll move the camera a little bit. course this is the Graco you guys have seen this maybe I don't know uh, if you see my Flickr page you've seen this so these are all 11 by 14s and they came out pretty nice pretty nice very very close to what's on the monitor Got a little bit of glare let me see if I can get the glare off there there we go There we go. And there's the freak show. You guys have seen that. That came out stunning. That looks great. This is a very fond. These pictures, a lot of people are like, eh, whatever. Um, they're very, I'm very fond of some of these pictures. This Junko, I love this Junko because of the dark background. Um, very, very cool. And, of course, the Pine Siskin. That came out awesome in print. Great. Of course, the old, uh, Song Sparrow. I call him, uh, Proud Boy. Song Sparrow, and this is my favorite image so far since I've back, been back in this journey of the nut hatch. It was just a great capture. The background is very artistic, the bokeh, and it's something you can't replicate. Uh, I absolutely adore this picture. Came out awesome in print. Same thing, nut hatch. Eh, not too fond of this, only because of the color. This is an accurate color of the moss. This is in winter. And the moss goes almost like an orangey, has an orangey tinge to it. Um, but one of my favorite, favorite bird, probably my all-time favorite bird. Of course, you guys may be familiar with the uh, Blue Jay, great capture. I used... Um, the tone equalizer in dark table to achieve this to get this ethereal glow to him really really nice i've got a lot of nice comments on that of course the chipmunk chip monkey uh the glutton i call it the glutton he's got his cheeks stuffed with bird seed i saw him coming down the rock out there uh it's kind of silly this is a European starling that was trying to get the suet in the pole. And I was uh, practicing with some songbirds in flight, small birds. Uh, neat capture. Um, can't really. There we go. I know this is not really the way to do it 
Uh, let's go to another one of my favorite birdies. Spent a lot of time watching the woodpeckers. I got a great woodpecker station out there. I got Harry's, Downies, Red Bellies. I have yet to hear an appeal. I'm trying to call Apiliated in. I know they're here, but and I've heard them, but I can't get them to. Call, I can't call them in for some reason. This image is a is total destruction. Very noisy image, but and it looks better on the computer screen. But when you see it in print, you go, "Ooh, that's pretty noisy." But I love this image of the chickadee because it was snowing. It's grainy. It's noisy. It has this feel to it, which communicates how harsh winter conditions can be here in Vermont. That's one of the reasons why I'm very fond of that image. Uh, really, really neat. Just close to my heart. Uh, what do we got? Morning doves. Birds of a feather. Locked together. That's what I call that. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I'm blocking the microphone. Uh, birds of a feather. And we got the cardinal. Uh, shot through some veg some uh, branches and other stuff to get this shot. Came out very nice. And a picture of the cardinal. Up close and personal. I call this the... Ooh. Call this the pupil. You can see his pupil in his iris, plain as day. If if I had the file up on the computer, it's amazing. Never knew you could see the pupil and iris on a cardinal, or any bird for that matter. Uh, female cardinal. Just so fun to have them. See what I mean? Have it tangible in your hands. I, I leave this on the coffee table and I flip through it. I look at it and say, oh, I wish I could have. I start picking it apart and I go, wait a minute, dude. Don't pick it apart. Just enjoy them. Enjoy them. You can't appreciate the images until you get them in print. I'm telling you. It's so fun. Song Sparrow, I call him Cool Breeze. Wind was coming from the back, and it was blowing his feathers straight up. Looks like he's got horns. Pretty funny. This is... The April Eclipse Woodpecker Series. Just did this the other day. The light during the eclipse was amazing. Absolutely amazing. Loved it. It was directional, but it was diffused. And this was coming right into full eclipse here in Vermont. And we were pretty much in the kill box. Got some great images of the red belly. Literally just a few minutes apart. Red Belly. Red Belly, love this shot. Love it. That's during the eclipse. See what I mean? The light was just very odd. It was still directional, but really interesting. I think this is it. Got a... Uh, These were all during the eclipse. This is the um, this is a nuthatch. They love nuthatches and and uh, woodpeckers love the stations, man. <laughs> they are all over the. Uh, this is a specific station set up for woodpeckers, and they're there all day long. I can walk. I walked up to the pole to put some suet in it. This is a few days ago. In this. I don't know if it was a male or a female, literally sat there and looked at me, and I could have reached out and touched it. It was like two feet away. And I said, hello. And it just, all of a sudden, boom, took off and left. They're not afraid of me. It's, it's the, the red belly, he's, he's pretty skittish. He doesn't stick around. But um, I have to be very still around him. But the downies, yeah, I can, and we got a hairy. Um... We got some Harry's here too. Harry's are fun. Big. So that's it, guys. 
that's my thoughts. That's my thoughts about printing. Printing. I would encourage you, if you've got the money, even if you don't have no money, take your file, upload it to a reputable place, and get some get a five by seven printed. You don't have to buy a printer. You know, you can just find a print house. Five by sevens are cheap. You can get those cheap. Just get some prints. Build a book. I'm going to be building books. I built books when I was a wedding photographer. Love building books, like nice books. We'll be doing some of that too. So, anyways, just some thoughts about the printing process. You don't have to go crazy. But I would encourage everyone, if you haven't busted it, it's not the cheapest thing. I will just warn you. But it is worth every penny. Because until you get it in print, you just don't know. I'm sorry. You don't. The print says it all. That's just the way I roll. And these are just words of encouragement. I ain't telling anybody what to do. I'm just telling you, as someone who's been into it for a very long time, um, who started out printing black and white, and then moved to color, Cibachrome, Ilfrachrome, and then over to large format, digital. If this printer blew up tomorrow, I would replace it with something else the next day. That's how important it is to me. Anyways, we'll see you all later. Have fun. Happy shooting. God bless. We'll see you soon.